Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of my new channel series, Ink With Me. In this series I'm going to cover my own experience and journey of self-teaching myself, how to ink the traditional way to enhance my current skill set. I'm hoping to feel confident enough to take part in this year's Inktober and put an architectural twist onto it. I want to take my time with this series and produce a quality series that not only teaches myself a new skill, but is also something that you, the viewer, can take away and learn from too, and hopefully not make the same mistakes I'm going to. So let's get started. So why ink, you might ask? Well. At Christmas, I was given this beautiful book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie McAvee. Um, and it's this wonderful life lesson in a book, basically. And it has these fantastic illustrations that is just purely just ink and paper. Nothing more about it, but the line whips and the textures and the shadows and the depths that this chap creates with just a few lines on the page is incredible and he obviously adds a little bit of colour along the way but I just love how um, how the ink medium shows so much movement and character in itself in the drawings so I was just really inspired to sort of get back into inking in, in, by being shown just how simple it can be. Whereas I was working it up in my head as something that's really technical and it really needs to be this, this and this. You know, I was just overthinking the whole thing, not realising that, hello, just dive in and get started. So that's another reason why I want to start doing these uh, videos as well. I mean, he's even left coffee rings <laughs> in here as well. And it's just, it's a fabulous book. I highly recommend to anybody. Um, but the story of the book is absolutely beautiful as well. Um, but more towards the professional side of why I want to um, get into inking is for architectural renders and even technical drawings and uh, just concept diagrams and sketches and things um, this book is produced in 1987 um, before I was even born so it's a little bit dated especially with some of the language that they use but I just wanted to show you some examples of sort of the architectural side of how to use these because this side's just a concept sketch but you can just see how much more depth and the line whips create and the scratchiness of the paper, um, texture of the paper and things create so much more than just using technical pens. Um, and also, obviously the added color is a bonus, but also for development sketches as well, when you're trying to work out the technical aspects of, you know, just even the simple thing of how um, the foundation is going to work with the floor plane and uh, the ground floor and things like that um, but even more of uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I mean this book's full of these fantastic ink dra drawings that this chap's done Ivo D. Burick I'll leave his name on the screen just in case it's not clear um, but there's your simple line drawing of atmospheric um, and it just adds a completely different element in e every time somebody does an ink drawing for an architectural uh, piece it's always different because of the person that's drawing it whereas don't get me wrong digital is fantastic um, but when you sit there and look at like I recently went to an exhibition um, not this recently um, <laughs> a few months back now um, and everyone did digital there was only one person that didn't um, but she really stood out because obviously <laughs> the only person that didn't but even though everybody had a different design 
in a different site, in a different um, way of approaching their work, because they did produce all of their renders and things in Photoshop or Illustrator or CAD and things, it just once you saw one and then another and then another they sort of start to blend together and you couldn't really remember which drawing was from which project and it just all got merged for me i find that anyway um it, even if you've got your own uh, style in digital rendering it still merges together because there's just something that a computer graphic um does that makes it the same um, and there's no way around it whereas doing it by hand in things um, you can produce these wonderful things now I know they look a little bit dated and that's because they're very 80s early 90s designs um, but I just wanted to show you the movement the color the textures everything that is just produced on these wonderful things because they are absolutely gorgeous and it's hope I'm hoping this is something that I can get to and start producing my own designs like this and then of course you can always add digital onto it um, or start with digital and then work onto which is um, what I'm hoping to do as well but I just wanted to oh, is this gonna fit on screen yeah um, let's try to zoom in a little bit yeah just look at the detail on this. I mean, even the reflections and things. I know obviously some of it's markers, especially the color, but just even the line widths to create the shadows, the line widths, the hatchings and the things, even just as simple as like doing the vegetation. It's just, to me, this is just what I'm hoping to achieve. Um, then the other drawing is this one, which is cross section. Um, let me zoom back out. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, even doing cross sections and things, it doesn't have to be the perspective final sort of designs. It can be just um, cross sections in any drawing, really. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you these few examples so you can hopefully get a scope as to why I'm doing this and what I'm wanting to achieve. Yeah, so um, next is a little um, unboxing from Jackson's of a whole bunch of ink stuff that I got from them.
let's get into the materials that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using a couple of pots, just any pots will do. Um, have them with water, one for dirty water, one for clean water. If that works with ink, I don't know. That's how I work with like paintings and things. Um, I've got this sketchbook that I've just stuck a sticker on. And it's just a simple um, sea white of Brighton sketchbook. Um, but I find the pa I can't work out what the paper is because it is sort of cartridge paper, but it's like really smooth. And I did try out the ink sort of on the back just to get a, a gist of, you know, is it going to ghost, which it doesn't. Well, it does a little bit, but you've really got to look. Um, and the ink's going really smooth. So I just want to use this for all the practice techniques that I'm going to teach myself. Um, get from books, videos, all sorts of things. Um, so just a sketchbook. Um, the ink that I'm predominantly going to use is the Liquid Text um, acrylic ink. I do prefer using the acrylic inks I know from my bullet journal videos as opposed to just trying to get you a close up and hopefully it focuses so I'm looking on a second monitor but the the resolution of it's not very good but yeah um, so I'm gonna use those uh, just black for now I'll introduce color later hopefully <laughs> if I succeed and then a traditional dip pen um, which as you can see I've heavily used with the bullet journals and probably ruined so I might upgrade this one to a plastic handle and then just a few brushes um, I'll probably just start off with these for now, just a big brush and a little brush, but these are like the Derwin uh, textile brushes um, that I just got in a pack a, a long time ago, but they're what I made to make these marks, um, but obviously I'll probably get into those later in the video, but just to start with, it is literally just going to be a couple of paint brushes, a dip pen, some ink and a book, a sketchbook that is, and some waters. So that's it for this episode. I just wanted to explain why I want to do ink, <laughs> introduce it, and then obviously uh, show you the materials. So if you guys want to get a couple of these materials before my next video and then do it along with me and then share what it is you do or share your advice with me and tell me where I'm going wrong um, that will be brilliant um, so I hope I see you in the next episode um, so in the meantime happy inking <laughs>